Hi, welcome back to the Dirty Bronco Crew channel. I'm Sean, and today I'd like to announce that we're going to change Dirty Bronco Crew to DBC Off-Road. Part of the reason why we're going to change it to DBC Off-Road is because I've added a forerunner to the fleet, and it's no longer just Broncos. So we're going to start today off by a video showing how the stock suspension works, and I purchased a, a Bilstein lift kit for it. We're going to install the lift kit and then do another test run to show the difference between stock suspension and a Bilstein lift kit. All right, so I wanted to go over the suspension that I bought for the Forerunner real quick, uh, what we'll be installing. So basically we got the entry level Bilstein 5100 kit. It comes with collars and you have to reuse the factory uh, Forerunner springs. So we'll build this up, you can change the ride height I think the top one is two and a half inches. Um, it's a digressive valve shock, so it'll probably be a little bit stiffer um, than the factory Forerunner shocks. So I'll have two, two and a half inches of ride height added in the front, and then the rear shocks, they don't add any rear, uh, rear height, but I did order springs. They're still coming in the mail, so the rear springs will lift at about an inch and a half. I will kind of detail installing those later. But, so we'll install this, we'll do some more videos showing the difference between the stock suspension and this suspension. Uh, part of the reason why I bought the Bilstein 5100 kit is it's pretty inexpensive. And then later on I, I want to upgrade to maybe like a Fox 2.0 or even the uh, King 2.5. And so then we can do another comparison video showing the difference between an entry level uh, suspension kit and then something that costs significantly more. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below where I purchased this. Uh, it was roughly, for what you see here, roughly about $448. All right, now we're gonna measure how high the stock ride height is. The tires are inflated to about 34 PSI right now just about 34 and a half inches. So 34 and a half inches is stock ride height. Okay, so this is the ride height after the suspension install. 34 and a half was the original stock ride height. See how it's changed now. Just under 37, so 36 and three quarter. So just under two and a half inches of ride height. All right, so we have a little whoop section right here that we're gonna compare the stock suspension versus the Bilstein suspension. Here we have a little goalie that we're going to compare the two suspensions on approach and depart departure angle. It doesn't really look like it too much on camera, but this is actually pretty steep coming up. So it'll give a good indicator of the differences, adding a couple inches of lift.
So this part here is going to be another ground clearance for approach and departure angle. Just kind of wanted to film around the edge of this to show it's a little off camber and then it gets pretty deep. Kind of walk through here, show the other side. Okay, in this portion of the video, we're going to compare the stock suspension versus the Bilstein suspension when coming to a stop. So the stock's forerunner um, dips pretty violently when you hit the brakes or have to come to a quick stop. And so there's a little bit better difference with the Bilstein suspension setup. If you notice, we had to change locations because there were some trucks unloading. And then I also got new tires for the second round of shoot. I just couldn't wait to get the new tires put on. So it's the only difference, shouldn't affect how the forerunner dips, but those are the differences. Okay, so after watching the video, you're thinking to yourself, Sean, there really isn't much of a difference that I can tell from the video. And you're pretty much right. So the Bilstein suspension is just a little bit different. Uh, if we're gonna use the stock forerunner suspension as a baseline, Bilstein probably adds about two out of 10 uh, to ride quality. It has a slightly better off-road feel, slightly better damping, and is just a little bit stiffer. Uh, this does help because if anyone's off-roaded a stock forerunner suspension, it's, it's really too soft. So, more noticeable in the video, uh, in the whoop section, it doesn't quite bottom out as bad when pushed a little bit harder. Um, and it's also a little bit firmer when you need to stop quickly. It doesn't dip as hard as the stock suspension does. So overall, the Bill's team is just a little bit better. The biggest issue that I ran into with the Bill's team suspension is actually the stock coils for the front. Uh, the stock coils are about a 550 pound spring rate, which is fine for a stock ride and no additional weight to the forerunner. So the problem I've had is I've added weights, I've added skid plates, uh, roof rack, and rock sliders to the overall weight of the forerunner which has really overwhelmed um, the stock shocks, or the stock springs. Um, the other issue that I've noticed off-roading is that uh, because there is no re remote reservoir, they do tend to fade uh, rather quickly on longer off-road trips. Um, they heat up pretty quickly and then they just get noticeably softer towards like midway through a, a ride. Um, part of the reason too that I'm not quite a fan of Bilstein is so I've owned a Ford Raptor before I've also owned a Can-Am Maverick X3 which aren't even the same I totally understand but because of that I tend to drive harder off-road which is just too much for 
uh, Bilstein suspension. Um, so after all this, having said that, would I recommend it? Uh, maybe. So if you're gonna leave your Forerunner stock with the stock weight and do some very mild off-roading and you just want bigger tires, uh, then yes, because it does add the lift and a slightly better ride quality. And for the price, it is significantly better than any type of spacer lift you can buy. I've used spacer lifts before, and they're just totally not worth buying. So just a little bit more money, and the Bilstein is a good lift. Uh, if you're going to add a ton of weight, or you're going to drive hard off-road, then no, I don't recommend the Bilstein suspension. So as of now, I have about 8,000 miles on the Bilstein kit, and for my needs, like I said, it just isn't enough. So I've decided to go all out and ordered a Fox 2.5s with uh, adjusters and custom tuning from AccuTune Off-Road. Um, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the front coilovers um, from Fox just because of all the COVID delays and everything. You can't get anything these days for off-road parts. Uh, However, as soon as I get the front suspension in, I'll install this and then do another video giving like a comparison between Bilstein and then the Fox. So until, until I get the shocks, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment if I missed anything you'd like me to go over and then uh, hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more videos. Thank you.